Hi and welcome back to my channel. My name is Michelle and today I'm going to be doing um, a fun video. I've done one of these before. I'm going to be recapping the entirety of Assassin's Blade. I've done this before. I did it with um, House of Earth and Blood, the first Crescent City book, before the second one came out. And um, I loved it. I rewatched that video recently because I was like, oh, is it worth it? Because it's like a lot of work to do these. I take quite a bit of time to put together. Um, and I decided, yes, it was. Because I loved that video and the way it turned out. Um, so I'm doing one for Assassin's Blade. I plan on kind of doing a full Sarah J. Mass reread over the next like year or so, kind of slowly working through all of her books. But I've decided to start with Throne of Glass, one because it's my personal favorite. Um, that's mostly why, <laughs> because it's my favorite. This time I'm reading it in chronological order. First time I read Throne of Glass, I read it in like the romantic method, so I read Assassin's Blade third. Um, but this time I'm reading Assassin's Blade first for just like a different reading experience, just to see see how it goes. Um, and I'm excited. I won't be spoiling things, so if you are using this as kind of like a, a refresher for yourself before you move on to another book, you're totally fine. I won't spoil things series-wide. I will obviously spoil the entire Assassin's Blade book because I'm going to be going through everything that happens in Assassin's Blade, but um, I won't spoil future books. Although I like might do like cheeky little like nods and winks, but you won't know what those mean. So let's jump right into it. Um, so Assassin's Blade is actually a series of novellas. I think there's, I like just made this PowerPoint, but I don't remember how many there are, like four or five novellas. And I will be kind of recapping each novella, novella individually as we go through. Um, I think that's one of the downfalls of this book is it is told in a series of novellas. And I think you can really feel that when you're reading it. You can tell that these were not, these were designed to kind of stand by themselves. Um, and now they're all combined together into one work and it's really not like a fully cohesive novel. So the first novella we get is The Assassin and the Pirate Lord. So I want to talk about the map and we'll kind of go through the map every single one but this is kind of some places that are important starting off. So this red circle is Riffold. This is the capital city of Ardalain which is the kingdom that most of the series kind of centers around. Ardalain has also taken over most of the other kin kingdoms on this continent although there's a few that are still you know doing their own thing. And during this, like, takeover of this empire, they also got rid of magic and banished the Fae. And so it's been about eight years that we've had this, like, this version of Ardalain on the continent. Um, and so Rifthold is where most of the series takes place. This is where Selena lives and where she has kind of grown up. Um, but she was born in Terrasin. She was born in Terrasin, left Terrasin when she was, like, a young, young child. We don't know a ton about what happened to her when she was a young, young child, but it is mentioned, like, throughout this book and throughout, kind of, some of the earlier books that Selena is from Terrasin. Um, but right now, she lives in Riffhold, and this is also where the Glass Palace is and, kind of, the center of the Empire. And then this book is mostly taking place, though, in that bottom circle where I have the arrow. She's traveling from Riffhold down to Skulls Bay, and all those islands there to hang out with the pirate. So I mentioned Selena. Sar Selena Sarthothian is our heroine. She's the central focus of this book. Um, she's an assassin. She's 16 years old, but she's also like the best assassin. She's like the top tier peak assassin in all of Ardalane. She's Ardalane's assassin. Um, she has turquoise eyes. She has blonde hair. She's definitely like a super girly girl. Like she's murdering people and then getting her nails done. And we love that for her. Um, she is usually masked, so no one knows who she is except the other assassins and, like, a few people here or there. But when she's, like, out in the world, she's, like, masked. So no one knows that she's, like, the 16-year-old assassin. They just know that she is, like, heir to the assassin's keep and heir to everything. And also, like, very good at killing people. Um, but I think she's like a very interesting dichotomy because she's also like super blonde and like super like beauty focused and part of this is like her beauty is a weapon this is a quote her beauty was a weapon but one she kept home but also could be a vulnerability so i think there is a lot of conversations in these books about her the power dynamics with her as a woman um and kind of the innate power imbalance that happens there and how she uses that to her advantage like throughout this novel but also like it is something that she's like aware of some of the other big players in this first novella, well, throughout the book, are Arabin and Sam are big players, but um, we also have Captain Rolf in this novella. Um, so Arabin ha Hamill is the king of the assassins. He is the one who found uh, Selena when she was like a child and first showed up in Riffold. And um, if I could fight, just like beat the crap out of any fictional character, it would be this man right here. It would be this redheaded man 
right here. I truly despise him, as we will come to find. And we will come to find why in this book. Um, and then we have Sam Cortland. Sam Cortland is another assassin. Um, his mom was a courtesan, um, a prostitute essentially, um, but she's dead and he's the same age as Selena or maybe like a year older. They've kind of always been rivals, although Selena is like the favored one. And um, Sam has a bit of a crush on Selena, but we love him. He is just like a precious gem of a man who should be protected at any cost. And then we have Captain Rolf. And um, I did not use a fan art picture for him because this is how I pictured him in my head and this is how you will picture him for the duration of this PowerPoint presentation. Um, and that is like classic pirate vibes, you know? Captain Hook. Um, he's Lord of the Pirates and he also has like a magic map on his arms, although since magic has been gone for the past eight years and it's not working. So he just has like a map tattoo. But that's how he became captain and like Lord of all the Pirates is because he had a magic cool map. So we open at the Assassin's Keep and they're in a meeting. Um, Araban, Selena, and Sam are all in a meeting and they're in a meeting because Ben, who was like Selena's friend and mentor, has been killed. Selena is like very insistent that she wants to go get the body. It's like very important to her that like bodies are retrieved and we have like proper burials we will kind of really get to know selena we're like presented with a selena who's like an assassin but she's also like pretty and like the cool girl but we like as we get to know her we find that she's like also very compassionate and i think we see the first seeds of that here when she's like so insistent that they need to go get ben's body um and i think they do that but really what this meeting is about is arabin is wanting to send them to skulls bay sorry if you can hear hammering there's a man working on our fence Arabin wants to send them to Skulls Bay to collect the debt because he feels like too many of his assassins are being killed by pirates and so he's going to send them to Skulls Bay to like give a stern talking to. And by them I mean Selena and Sam. So they're going to Skulls Bay, Arabin is sending them. So they get to Skulls Bay, it's like a two month journey on a ship. It's a while. They're on a ship. They get there. They're taken up to Captain Rolf's office, and Selena immediately starts snooping through his desk because that's her vibe. Um, she's snooping through his desk, and then she's like sitting in his chair and has her feet literally up on his desk when he walks in the door. And Captain Rolf is like, nice to meet you. Hello. And they're like, we're here to collect a debt. And he's like, no, you're not. You're here to barter like a new slave trade agreement. And you're here to pick up some slaves that Arabin is um, trying to buy. And Selena's like kind of ticked because she's like very anti-slavery. She's like, we do not need this money. Arabin is like richer than sin. Like, why are we suddenly trading in slaves? Like slavery, not cool. Slavery is also something that has kind of come about during this like fall of magic and there's like several slave mines that where a lot of the slaves are sent and then some of them live like within households and are also household slaves. And so she's like, kind of unhappy about it but she's playing it cool. She's playing it cool and so um her and Sam are taken out to the slave ship to kind of like inspect things and um we have a ship full of slaves and then we kind of see the lay of the land. There's also this like big chain called the Shipbreaker that is like stretched out like across the harbor so like no ships can come in and out of the harbor without the ship breaker being lowered or raised i don't remember which way it goes but um otherwise it'll like obviously just like crack your ship in half um and then we also know that rolf's ship is called the sea dragon this is not actually important to the story but it is important to the larger series we're back um, I'm in like a completely different location because it's a new day. Selena is very much like, we have a choice, we can save these guys. And Sam's like, that's probably a bad idea. And she's like, I don't need your help. I'm Selena Sarthosian. And then Sam was like, I will help you, but I do think it's a bad idea. And she's like, it might be reckless, but it might be the most meaningful thing we ever do. It won't be. Spoiler. Obviously, there's a whole book series after this, but um, this is important as far as her like character development. They need to get the shipbreaker down. So what they do is that night they row out to the boat, they incapacitate all of the guards, and then they find one guy who speaks, I don't know, not English, the common tongue, you know, they speak the same language as them. And he like, she like explains to them, there's two boats actually, there's two ships. But she like explains to him that like, they got to go, here's the plan, as soon as dawn hits, you need to start rowing. Like get the heck out of here. Um, we will get the shipbreaker down, but no matter whether the shipbreaker is down or not, you need to start going. Um, we will take care of the rest, but also don't go above deck until dawn because we don't want anyone to like spot you. And so they row out to the boat. They explain that and they hop back and they head back into town where their plan really starts. So they meet up with Captain Rolf in a bar and Sam and Rolf drink a lot. Selena's there. 
it's a good time. A good time is had by all. Um, and then everyone is like raucously drunk. Oh, I think also Sam like really cheats him out of a lot of like not Sam isn't cheating, but Sam is actually very very good at cards, um, and so he. Um, wins a lot of money in a few games of cards and nobody really likes that because people like to win at cards um, but Sam does win because he's very good at cards um, and then they start a bar fight and while this like huge bar fight is going on they sneak out the door and they're like walking away they think everything is going to plan and Sam is like if we live through this line remind me how to teach you how to play cards properly and for some reason this moment is like heart-wrenching to me it's just like a really sweet little little moment it's like nod to their like continuing friendship because remember before this trip they were rivals but now they're like working together free slaves they're like buddies anyway rolf wasn't fooled by the bar fight though and so he ends up tussling with selena um but sam is able to break away and he makes it to one of the towers where the shipbreaker is attached and where like the guards are and he like is incapacitating the guards he's like fighting selena can see him from where she's tussling with rolf and then sam uses He's like, I can't get the shipbreaker down in time because turning one of the like little handles that make the shipbreaker turn is actually like a two-man job. And Sam's up there by himself, so he's trying, but it's not working. So instead, he decides to just like catapult the tower down. And so he uses a catapult, knocks the whole tower down. Unfortunately, he's kind of like in the rubble. And so Selena's like, Ooh. but the shipbreaker is down. The boats leave the harbor. Rolf is ticked. Um, and so they're like again fighting. Selena, of course, gets the upper hand because she's the coolest assassin in all of Ardalain. And she's like, okay, I won't kill you, but you have to sign some letters for me. And he's like, why would I do that? And she's like, I mean, it would be nice if you did, but even if you don't, like, I can forge your signature and I stole, stole your, like, little seal ring, the thing you need to, like, be like, this is official, um, when I was in your office. Remember that? So, it, like, would be nice, but, like, don't worry about it if you don't want to. And one is to Arabin saying that, like, slave trade is off, like, forever. And if Captain Rolf ever catches you selling slaves, trading in slaves, like, that's the end of things for you. And then she also makes Captain Rolf send another letter out to, I think, some other pirates being like, we're done. And she's like, if I ever hear about you trading slaves, I'll come and it'll be the end of you. And Captain Rolf is like, why do you go to so much trouble for slaves? And then Selena says, because if we don't fight for her, them, who will? What a queenie bop. Um, and then Captain Rolf is like, if you ever come back here again, your life is forfeit. He's like, I will literally kill you. You're the worst and I hate you. Then we find Sam and he's fine. And they are like BFFs. Selena and Sam forever. This is when they become best friends. And they go home to Riffold. We don't know what finds out. We uh, don't immediately find out what happens next. Because then we jump into the next novella, which is called The Assassin and the Healer. This is um, one of my favorite things in the entire Throne of Glass series. Not just this novella, but like how this novella connects to the rest of the series. Oh, it's so good. I think it's also a really good novella. I think it shows us a lot about like Selena as an individual, like her character. But it's just delightful. Okay. We only meet like one character who is like super important in this one everyone else is kind of like whatever selena is obviously still our main girly but now we also have met yurene yurene towers um and she is the daughter of a healer she's 18 years old and um she's working in this gross inn where selena's staying um i will show you the map in a second but selena has essentially done the she's been like exiled to the red desert to like train with some people in the desert which is like on the other side of the continent and so this city is like her stop before she gets on a ship to like make the last part of the journey um, so it's kind of like a gross inn. Um, so she's staying there, and Yurene wanted to, like, originally had come to this inn to save up a little bit of money to make a similar journey. This is like a port city to get on a boat and go to the southern continent, um, where there's a healer academy called the Taurus Sesme, um, which is like this very famous. It's like the best healing academy in all of the world. It's where like her mother trained, um, and she wanted to trade there too, but when she got there like she was never able to like make enough money to leave and she kind of just got like stuck stuck on this middle step um but we love her she's the coolest we're at the white pig inn selena is drinking she's like in all of her assassin garb she's like her big hood on um and she is staying in a really nice room the ni well it's not nice actually but it's the nicest room in the inn because they are planning on like robbing her later and like Yurene knows it um luckily selena also knows it and she is like mostly just bored and like looking for something to do and so she has been kind of like preparing for a fight like her whole plan is to get her them to like try to rob her so she could fight someone selena also looks like quite terrible um because she did get the the like absolute shit beat out of her by arabin and she's being sent to the red desert as like a punishment 
So she's looking rough. She's like banged up. Anyway, Selena's like looking for a fight, but when Yareen is cleaning up she's in the back alley like you know taking out the trash and a bunch of men come and attack her selena comes in saves her before anything can happen and then yurene is like repayment she's like thank you so much and she like binds her wounds um and is like this girl is like so cool <laughs> she says this girl wasn't like water wildfire she was wildfire deadly and uncontrollable and slightly out of her wits which is like a beautiful that is selena to a to a t and so Yurina's like talking to her she's like i want to be a healer and selena's like well why are you here and she's like well i need to like go to the southern continent and i don't have enough money and selena's like you need to figure it out and then Yurina's like could you teach me a little bit and uh selena's like yeah sure and so selena teaches her some self-defense she like is like there's three rules don't let them move you to another location fight back enough not to be worth it and then when you can run and get away um and she teaches them self she teaches her self defense as you can see over here this is selena demonstrating some self defense techniques it's just like a short little little lesson um and then Yurina's like, how can I ever repay you for this? And Selena's like, if you get the chance, teach it to any female who would take the time to listen. Like, that's all the repayment she wants is for Yurina to, like, teach other females to be, like, able to take care of themselves and defend themselves, which is, like, so sweet. Um, I also love this quote that says, there was such an irony, she realized, in them working together. The assassin and the healer, two opposite sides of the same coin. Strange. Important. Maybe then they're like clean they're in the alley they've been practicing self-defense and then all of a sudden a gaggle of men show up and selena's like you go inside i'm gonna fight them off and selena so yurene is like peering through the doors selena like kicks butt obviously but then a man sneaks up behind yurene and grabs her and selena's like i cannot help you maybe you should help yourself and yurene uses her new self-defense skills to beat him up and um then she wins and she's like did you do that on purpose and selena was like yeah i needed you to practice obviously so now you know you can do it and um then the next morning comes selena gets on her boat to head to the red desert but she leaves some presents for yureen she leaves her a big bag of money and a ruby brooch that arabin gave her and a note that says the world needs more healers it says some other stuff too about like why she left this money but i love the part where it says the world needs more healers it is beautiful okay i'm gonna read you some quotes from this section because there are some like something is happening here there were so many of them now the children who had lost everything to ardalane children who had grown into assassins and barmaids without a true place to call home their native kingdoms left in ruin and ash magic had been gone all these years and the gods were simply dead were dead or simply didn't care anymore yet there was deep in her gut a small but insistent tug a tug on a strand of some invisible web so selena decided to tug back just to see how far the wide reverberations would go she hoped that an assassin's jewel would pay for a healer's education like what is happening will we see you read again so the next novella is the assassin and the desert this one is like i think one of the chunkier ones in the book so we do have a map this time unlike last time so before we were over on the other side so now we're in this purple circle which is the red desert where they're training and they also have the um briar gate circled ansel who we'll meet in just a second is from briar gate and it's reference so she's from north of the red desert but on like the um western slope of or western side of the continent where like ardalane and most of the like other kingdoms are on the eastern side so here are the characters we care about in this one so we have the mute master he is like the boss man of the red desert assassin so they're called the silent assassins and they have like a very martial arts style training method so obviously i um picked the the master from the only uh, martial arts movie i've really ever seen um which is kung fu panda so that's what we have and then we have his son elias and um also ansel ansel is selena's roommate she gets a roommate when she gets to the red desert it's ansel and Ansel and her become buddies ansel is like the second character elias is actually not that important but um i put him here i actually don't know if i reference him much again she arrives at the red desert and she's like hey everyone i'm here you were supposed to train me and then immediately the mute master is just like sitting there then all these people come and like attack selena so she has to like fight them off it's like her first challenge and then she's told like okay welcome here's your roommate ansel and she's like sent to her room she has to go to the red desert 
and get a like note from the mute master saying that like she did good um before she can return she's like one month there and then she's supposed to return also while she was walking to the red desert i didn't make a slide for this but she had to like walk all the way here it was her birthday and like no one even celebrated and that is quite rude um and so when she's like settling in for her first night we kind of get a little bit of a flashback to what happened when her and sam returned from skulls bay and so this is her and Sam in Arabin's office returning from Skulls Bay. They have the letter that Selena wrote and had Rolf sign um, saying like no more slave trade. Arabin obviously is like pretty upset because it cost him like a lot of money. Um, and so some guys come in and hold Sam and then um, he beats the absolute shit out of Selena. And Selena's like major thought is like mm, he is ruining this rug. He's getting so much blood on this rug. Um, and she has like memories of seeing Sam being like held back by these three men. And he's like shouting something, but she can't remember what he's shouting. And so that's what she left with. And then she didn't see Sam again before she was sent off to the Red Desert. So back in the Red Desert, she's with her roommate Ansel. And then in the morning, she's like, okay, I'm ready to train with the Mute Master. And Ansel's like, no, actually, first thing we do is go on a run. So you go through this like cute little three mile run through the dunes and then three miles back. They like run three miles to an oasis, grab water, and then run three miles back. Um, it's very, very miserable. And Selena like barely does it. And then she gets to the oasis and they're kind of like teasing her and they're like, did you deserve that beating? Because she's, remember, like, black and blue and, you know, is, like, a month out from her beating, but still, like, purple. And Selena says, if Arab and Hamel is telling the story, then yes, I suppose I did deserve it. I cost him a good deal of money, a kingdom's worth of riches, probably. And I was disobedient and disrespectful and completely remorseless about what I did. But if the 200 slaves that I freed are telling the story, then no, I suppose I didn't deserve it. Um, and then they stop bothering her because they realized that she's the coolest. Anyway, she runs three miles back. It's, like, very hard, and she's, like, when am I going to get to train with the Mute Master? And Ansel's, like, I've been here for, like, two, five years, and I have not trained with him at all yet, so. And Selena's, like, I'm here for a month, and I have to get a letter from him. And Ansel's, like, I don't know, girly, but all you can do now is just, like, do what we're doing. And so that's what they do. And then that night, Lord Barrack's men come. Lord Barrack is this, like, local villain, they have, like, a local villain. He lives in the nearby town of Xandria. He's, like, the lord of that town. Um, and he, like, comes to bother the mute assassin, the silent assassins, like, all the time. And so they're, like, kind of used to it. And so everyone goes up on bow and arrow, and they, like, wind up, like, lighting. It's, like, a fire moat, essentially, around the, um, like, assassin's house. And then the men leave. And then a few days later, um, Ansel is sent to Xandria to have a meeting with Lord Barrack. She's, like, in charge of meetings with Lord Barrack. She's never trained with the Mute Master, but, like, she's in charge of these meetings. And she's like, Selena, do you want to come with me? And Selena's like, sure. And so they have to, like, walk through the desert back to Xandria. And while they're walking, they do, like, a lot of talking. Um, and Ansel talks about how she has, like, a lot of problems, actually, with the Silent Assassin. She feels like they kind of just, like, sit in their house and train, but, like, don't really help anyone. And she is like, if I was in charge, we would, like, go and, like, defend people and, like, protect, defend every unprotected realm out there. Um, we learn that, like, Ansel is from Briargate. Her, like, kingdom was taken over by Ardaline, like everyone else's was, and it was, like, a bad time, and Ansel is, like, pretty sad about it, having, like, a pretty sad time, and Selena's, like, listening to her talk about this. And then she talks about what's happening over in the Western Waste. So Ansel does live in the Western Waste, as I kind of showed you. I have it circled here on the map, and this is also the land of the witches. We love the witches here in this household. Um, we don't know we love them yet. We won't know we love them for many, many books, but um, when the witches are, like, truly introduced, we love them. So there's essentially, like, two families of witches. There's the Iron Teeth Witches and the Crotian Witches. And the Crotian Witches are, like, the cool witches. They are, like, pretty. They are, like, nice. They are, like, friendly. And then the Iron Teeth are, like, ruthless. And they are mean and, like, cutthroat and will just, like, kill you dead for no reason. And what happened was the Western Wastes became the Western Wastes, became like a barren land because the Crotians were in charge, but then the Iron Teeth took over and there was a blight put on the whole land and now no crops will grow. And so like that was part of the problem and then Ardaline came in, like things are just bad over on that side of the world. And so Ansel's like telling Selena about this and she's like, the only way to kill a witch is to cut off her head. So some important information to save for later. And so then we get to Xandria. We get into town. And Ansel's like, see you later. And Selena's like, I don't get to come. And she's, and Ansel's like, no, I literally just want a company on the walk. You cannot, we like barely know you can't come with me to go see Lord Barrack. And so she, it's like market day. So Selena has something to do. Selena loves a good shopping trip. And so she's shopping around. She's looking at like slippers and perfumes. And then she comes to this man 
who has spider silk and she's like you have spider silk and he's like you recognize it and he she's like yeah I did that's like crazy um and he's like explaining how he got it and he looks like much older than her but he's only a few years older than her and he's like yeah what actually happened was I traded 20 years of my life for the spider silk these spiders are like giant they're called the stygian spiders they're like giant spiders very much like Aragog you know what I mean Hagrid spider from Harry Potter um like that size spider and um their spider silk is like the strongest thing ever but they won't like just give it to you you have to like trade it and they trade in like soul and dreams and so he traded 20 years of his life for the spider silk and the only way he can get those 20 years back is if the spider who he traded it with is killed and so he's like you are an assassin maybe you could do it and she's like I'm like a little bit busy right now but like you hit me up later and I will for sure help you out and he's like okay let me give you a little reminder so you don't forget me and so she gives him or he gives her like a little square of spider silk which is like a handkerchief size which would be worth like so much money and is like so valuable and so selena takes it and is like okay and um then ansel comes back and ansel's like hey girly i have this like crazy wild idea what if we steal these horses and so <laughs> they go back to lord barrack's house and they steal these two horses these are the Styrian horses they are like super fancy horses whose eyes seem like they might be older than this universe. Anyway, nothing to see here. They steal them. They're worth like so much money. So much money. But um, Selena and Ansel steal them. They ride them back to town. People are like chasing them. They jump over this big gulf, but they like make it back really quickly. They spend one night like out in the desert. And when they're out in the desert, they're looking up the sky and looking at all the constellations and Selena is like telling um, Ansel about like all the constellations and she points out the stag constellation which is the lord of the north and she's like this constellation never moves like it is always visible in the sky and it's always in the same spot and Ansel is like why and Selena is like because the stag remains constant no matter the season he's always there so the people of Terrison will are always know how to find their way home so they can look up at the sky no matter where they are and know that Terrison is forever with them. So we're like again reminded that Selena is from Terrison. We've already mentioned this like once or twice, but like Selena's from Terrison. And then also while they're like sleeping, Selena does remember what Sam said that day with Arabin in the study. Sam had been yelling at Arabin, I'll kill you. Which is like so sweet. We love that for him. So they get back to the silent assassins and um, the meat master is like very mad about them stealing the horses. Like they're trying to have a good relationship with Lord Barrack, so he stops like attacking them. So like maybe stealing his stuff isn't a great idea. And um, they're both like, Ooh, and Selena is like, it was my idea. Even though it was like very clearly Ansel's idea, she's like, I'm gonna take the blame for this. And then they like negotiate that their punishment is going to be like cleaning the stables every morning. They're gonna be on stable duty. And so essentially, that's what they do. They are like cleaning the stables every morning and. The mute master has decided to start actually training Selena because he, I think he really like admired the fact that Selena was like willing to take the blame for something, you know. Also, I think he was a little sus of Ansel. And so he like takes him on the roof, and it is very like martial arts. She's like imitating animals. <laughs> a little reductionist, maybe. But she's like, he's like, look at the snake. Be like the snake. And then there's like a rabbit. He goes, we go through a bunch of animals. She's like training with the mute master. She's like learning things. Um, meanwhile, her and Ansel are becoming bestie besties, and, like, one day she gives Ansel, like, a makeover, and she does, like, makeup on her, <laughs> and it's, like, a really fun time, and we, like, learn that Selena has never really had a friend before. Like, she's definitely never had, like, a friend who's a, another woman, but she's, like, never really had any real friends. She's grown up mostly with boys, and a lot of them were just kind of, like, more like her co-workers than her friends, and she is, like, so sad that she's gonna have to go back to Rifthold and not have her buddy. Um, but one day they do, her and Ansel do get into a big fight. They're, like, bickering. Um, because Selena is like, you are never gonna get Briargate. I don't remember how it starts, but she's like, you are never gonna get Briargate Cliff back. You're never gonna earn it. And Ansel's like, yes, I am. You're just being, like, a baby. And they fight. But it's okay, because the next day, um, Ansel does come with wine and is like, let's be besties again. Unfortunately, the wine is drugged, so I don't know if that counts. Um, and she... <laughs> takes drugged Selena and like leaves her in the middle of her des in the desert with like water and food and like all of her stuff and a letter a sealed letter like the note she needed from the mute master and also a note that was like sorry bestie we had to we like figured it would be easier to just like let you go mute master says you've like trained enough have a great one and she also gives her her Asterian horse that she stole so 
Selena's just like napping in the desert with all of her stuff. She wakes up and she's like, fine. And she starts heading back to Xandria. And as she's on her way to Xandria, she sees a ton of Lord Beric's troops heading in the red, red desert. You know, the only thing that's in the red desert? That's right. These like mute master's house, the as silent assassins keep. And um, she's like, this is like heck of sus. And she gets to Xandria and she just like has a bad gut feeling. And so she um, opens the letter that Ansel left her with and it's blank. Ansel sent her back with a blank letter. Um, and so she decides to like jump back on her horse and ride as fast as she can back to the assassin's house um, because the Lord Beric's men are clearly going to attack. And she knows she's only one person, but like she's also slain to start throw the end. So that has to count for something. So she makes her way back. Um, Lord Beric's men is there. The, she finds a place like in ruins. There are like bodies everywhere. And she's like, where's the meat master? And so she runs up to where the meat master normally stays. And she finds Ansel. There's a bunch of people passed out on the floor. Um, Ansel's boyfriend, which we didn't mention. It's like passed out on the floor. Elias, the meat master's son, is also like bleeding out. But he's not dead yet. And the meat master clearly wants her to like tend to his son, but she wants to save the meat master. And she's gonna save both of them because she's Selena Sarthothian. And so she's like, Ansel, stop. And Ansel's like, no, like Lord Barrett promised me all of his men to help me go take back Briarcliff if I brought him like the meat master's head. And, um,. Selena like fights her off and is like they're fighting um and she obviously is better at fighting than Ansel we know this about a Selena and she is talking to Ansel and she's like okay you have 20 minutes to get your stuff and go she like is friends with Ansel and she's like unwilling to just be like um so she's like you have 20 minutes get all your stuff and go and she gives Ansel her sword back because her sword is like her family sword and so Ansel like runs out of the keep and uh grabs all of her stuff and like grabs her horse meanwhile she's selena's tending to elias and talking to the mute master and then when the 20 minutes have passed she goes up on the roof and um she sees ansel like storming away so she told ansel she had like 20 minutes to get out of range because selena obviously is also very good at archery and so um selena's up on the roof and she's gonna shoot her but she knows that she would hit the shot and so she waits another minute and the the arrow misses ansel and Ansel is able to like ride on into into the sunset um and so she goes back she like explains what happened to the meat master the meat master gives her the letter they like have a chat and he's like I'm really he's actually talking now he's been mute this whole time the meat master but he's like I actually never took a vow of silence I just like most of the time don't want to talk um and so they like have a cute little chat and um he's like I'm really glad that you um, showed her mercy. You, like, gave back her family sword and you waited the 21 minutes. He's like, you didn't wait 20 minutes, you waited 21. Um, and he says, and maybe when she makes her next move to reclaim her title, she'll remember the assassin from the north and the kindness you showed, showed her and tried to leave fewer bodies in her wake. And so we kind of see, uh, Selena's kindness showing this, like, positive impact on the world. Ugh. And they, like, have a conversation around, like, um, anger and pain and, like, how we deal with pain. And, like, some people learn to embrace it and love it. Some people endure it through drowning it in sorrow or by making themselves forget others turn it into anger but Ansel let her pain become hate and let it consume her until she became something else entirely a person I don't think she ever wished to be um and I think we see this throughout the series is like a lot of these people like had something tremendously painful happen to them in their past and like they all deal with it and turn it into something different Anyway, and so he gives her the letter that she needs for Arabin. Um, and he also says, in the Red Desert, we do not abuse our disciples. Like, remind Arabin Hamill of this. Because it's not cool to, like, just beat the crap out of someone. He also gives her a bunch of treasure. He's like, thanks for saving my life. Here's a bunch of treasure chests. I know you owe money to um, Arabin. Like, maybe use this to get out from under his thumb. A very similar thing that she did for Yurene at the last place. The chapter ends with this line. She heard the north wind calling her home and she was not afraid like she's ready girly girl is like stepping into her own i think this is um, a moment where she like really learned what like leadership looked like and realized it did not have to look like arabin um it could look like the mute master and it could look like mercy and it could look like kindness and i think it's like a pretty important moment for her we're on to the next novella the next uh, novella is the assassin and there were the assassin and the underworld these next novellas both take place in rifthold so we will be in rifthold the capital city for the remainder of of this powerpoint presentation so she returns selena is like ready to like 
just like rip into her a bit. Like she has been like just like festering this hatred and this anger this like whole time she's been gone. But the first thing that Arabin says when he, she returns is like, I'm so sorry, I would take it back if I could. We kind of like get a little bit more insight into like their relationship. Selena, this is a quote. Father, brother, lover. He had never really declared himself any of them. Certainly not the lover part. Though if Selena had been another sort of girl, and if Arabin had raised her differently, perhaps that have might, might have come to that. He loved her like family, yet he put her in the most dangerous positions. He nurtured her and educated her, yet he had obliterated her innocence the first time he had made her end a life. And he had given her everything, he had also taken everything away. She could no sooner sort out her feelings towards the king of assassins than she could count the stars in the sky. So she shows back up, she gives him the letter from the meat master and he like is immediately giving her presents and is like sorry girly um and she's just like having a really hard time figuring out like what she feels about it because um she like wants to be mad at him but also he's being like so nice to her and he's like her everything like he saved her when she was like an orphan in the streets and like raised her and trained her so like how can she just be like f you you know and so Arabin's like, I have a new project for you. Um, the Queen of Melisande, which is a kingdom in, that Ar Ardalane hasn't taken over. Essentially, instead of having Ardalane taking over the kingdom, Melisande was just like, we will make an alliance. And you are like essentially the boss of my kingdom, but you don't have to take it over. And so the Queen of, Queen of Melisande is here for like some diplomatic visits. And this man named Donovil is here. And Donovil has these like really important papers that are going to lead to like slave trade. Um... And the Queen of Melisande wants him killed. And so Arabin's like, you have a new job, you job. And Elaine and Selena's like, great, I love stopping slavery. And she's like, so I'm all about this. And then we meet our our Queenie May Queen Queen. She's not gonna feel like a Queenie May Queen Queen in this book. But we see her again. We realize that Lysandra is a Queenie May Queen Queen. Sorry if that's a spoiler, but like you need to know it. I don't think anyone should proceed not thinking that Lysandra is a queenie queen McQueen queen at any moment like Selena doesn't like her but I think as an objective bystander you can say you can like tell that she's in a bad circumstance you know she's making the most of what she has um Lysandra kind of like grew up as Selena's rival they're the same age and Arabin like took an interest of her she's training to be a courtesan essentially a prostitute there was like an incident in which Selena like beat her up with a fan um <laughs> They've also, like, kind of been competing over Sam all these years. And so, Selena comes back. She's, like, chatting with Sam. Lysandra shows up. And she's, like, I don't want to talk to you anymore, Sam. Stupid Lysandra's here. So, the next day, Arabin takes um, Selena to the tailor. This um, Melisande tailor. Melisande is known for their, like, little, like, trinkets and items. that are, Like, very intricate machinery type thing. And so, he's getting her fit for, like, this cool cat suit. Which is actually what she's wearing in the picture I used for Selena, I'm pretty sure. Um, this cool cat suit is, like, armored in a bunch of places. It also has, like, weapons that, like, shoot out of it. Which is, like, super fun and fresh. And Arabin's, like, she's, like, how much is this going to cost me? And he's, like, I'm going to buy it for you. Because I love you. And he doesn't say. I'm, I, because I love you this is actually important but he's like because I'm sorry and we are BFFs remember and so I was like oh my gosh thanks and she, he's like I'm gonna have Sam get one too but I'm not buying his because and um and then he's like bye um and so she's there and she's like talking with the tailor man and she's is like oh I have this like square of spider silk can you put it on the like cover of the heart because it'll like provide even more like coverage and will be cool um, and so she does that, and then Sam shows up, and she's chatting with Sam, and he's like, what would, like, what does he need to do to, like, buy your, I see that he's, like, already trying to buy your affections, and, like, buy your forgiveness, and Selena's like, yeah, it seems like he already bought yours, like, what was your price, and, um, Sam's like, my price was his oath that he'd never lay a hand on you again, and then Selena feels bad, because she's been kind of rude to Sam, um, but she leaves, because she doesn't know how to deal with her feelings. And that night, they go to the theater. So it's her, so it's Selena, Sam, Lysandra, and Arabin. They're in the theater. Selena loves the theater. Like, loves music, loves the arts. Like, girly girl appreciates beauty. Like, we know this about her. And so she's supposed to be, like, kind of, like, watching Donable and, like, learning things. But instead, she's just, like, absorbed in the theater. She's crying as the orchestra is playing. Lysandra's trying to make fun of her, and Sam's like, leave her alone, Lysandra. Um... And she, like, doesn't watch Donovan leave. And Sam's like, you should have really been, like, 
tracking that man and she was like some things are more important than death and for her one of those things is music so that night she goes home and she's like trying to play the music on the piano she's trying to remember what the orchestra sounded like and trying to repeat it on the piano and sam comes in and catches her and is like oh it's not quite right right and he's like she's like no and she's like frustrated and annoyed and like again has a hard time dealing with the feelings that sam is evoking on her so she's probably mean to him but the next day she comes up to the piano and sitting on the piano is this music that um <laughs> that sam has gotten her and he got her the like music for the orchestra performance that they saw last night and in the corner he wrote try not to stain them with your tears when you play it took a lot of bribes to get these um and you can <laughs> you can buy sheet music that looks like this but i would not because i would cry too much when i saw it i'm like crying just thinking about it will i make it through this powerpoint presentation without crying no absolutely not Will I make it through this novella without crying? I hope so. Next novella, there's like no way that I'll be able to talk to you about it without weeping. But anyway, we're not there yet. So she gets this like beautiful gift from Sam. And um, it's like the sweetest thing ever. Sam is an excellent gift giver. So then there's another party. And Selena is like dressed in the nines, obviously. Um, Sam is there. Lysandra's there somewhere. Arabin is talking to the Queen of Melisande. And then Donovan's there. And Selena's like, I'm going to use my feminine wiles to trick him into telling me what's going on so I don't have to follow him around quite as much. So she like try, she like essentially goes up and like pretends that she like wants to go on a date with him. But um, needs to figure out like what else he has going on on that day because it's like at this specific meeting that she's supposed to kill him because then he's gonna have all these papers and so he like tells her right away he's kind of a little bit creepy he's a little bit of a creeper um and so she deals with that um and then like is just gets to enjoy the night because she did her work for donovan and she's like hanging out with sam but all of a sudden these four masked men i know i only have three in the powerpoint but like you just have to trust me. These four masked men come down the stairs, and she starts dancing with one of them. And he asks her name, and she says, My name is Wind and Rain and Bone and Dust. My name is a snippet of a half-remembered song. I have no name. I am whoever pay whoever the keepers of my fate tell me to be. And then the masked man <clears throat> says, Let me call you mine for a dance or two. It's, like, very cute. Very, like, fun. Play on, like, their names. And then Sam does sweep in and, like, steal her because he wants to dance with her. It's very cute. Very fun. Also, um, I do think we meet this young masked man later. There may be a reason he's wearing a crown. I don't know. So, anyway, the next night she is, like, doing some more stig out for Donald. This is Donald's house, the purple one, obviously. And, um, she's on the roofs next door, like, watching him. <laughs> he's disco dancing in front of his house apparently according to my powerpoint presentation she's watching him unfortunately some guards they are like girly why are you up here watching our house and they do take her down to the sewers and they tie her up and they're she's like i'm not gonna answer any of your questions and she's like that's fine we don't these guards are like that's fine we don't actually need you to the sewers are about to flood and so we're actually just gonna let you drown down here and she's like oh, bad news and so um she's all tied up luckily her suit has like those like knives that she can like shoot out so she's able to like free herself um but she doesn't know how to get out of the sewers which are like rapidly flooding so she's like swimming in sewer water and she's trying to find like one of those like <sighs> great covers so she can push out and she does find one unfortunately it's rusted shut and she cannot pry it open the waters are flooding around her she's just peering through these bars and she's like ah! screaming and hollering and then guess who shows up sam sam hears her crying and throwing a fit and he was like coming to the house anyway to like assist her for the night and so he is like i'm gonna help you and but he can't get the great cover off either like she's pushing he's pulling and they cannot get it off and so selena thinks she's gonna die and she says take my body home to terrace and sam because as we know she's from terrace um but luckily um sam is able to rescue her he like resuscitates her and then she's like okay we're actually done with this i am done with Arabin. Um, and so she takes all the treasure she got from the meat master. She's like, I'm paying off all my debts to you because I'm done. And Arabin's like, okay, that's fine. Whatever. He plays it very cool. I don't know. So she has an apartment somewhere else in the city that she's going to move into. She's going to still work for Arabin and she makes that very clear. She's like, I still want to work for you. I just don't want to be like indebted to you. And he's like, okay, no big deal. Um, clearly it is a big deal. Anyway, later that night, her and Sam are staking out the sewers because they are going to use the sewers to sneak into Donovan's house to kill him. And 
Sam is like, I'm leaving. Sam's like, I am going to the Southern Continent or I'm going somewhere else. I like can't stay here. Like I've already told Arabin. And Selena's like, you have to stay here. You have to stay with me. And he's like, I can't. Do you understand? Like he talks about how um, upset he was when she got beat up. And he's like, I can't even look at him anymore. Just looking at him like makes me so angry. And he's like, the worst part of it is I know that if I asked you to pick between him and me, you would pick him. And Selena's like, I would pick you. Um, and then they kiss and it's like the most romantic little sweet, sweet little scene. Um, and they go home after that. Uh, <laughs> they go home after kissing and having like a really nice time. And that night, Selena, in the silence of her bedroom, she swore an oath to the moonlight that if Sam were her, no force in the world would hold her back from slaughtering everyone responsible. She just like is in love with Sam and it is sweet and cute and we love it. Um, so the next day, they like sneak. Selena like sneaks in through the sewers up to Donovan's office. She gets the papers from his office, and then it's him and this other guy. She kills Donovan in his office, but then is following the other guy out into the street. She has Donovan's papers. She's following the other guy out in the street. He has more papers. She he starts like lighting himself on fire, and she was like Donovan. He was like Donovan loves loved his country, and um, he lights the papers on fire too. The papers are only like half in flame. Selena puts it out and realizes that it's a list of like safe houses in Melisande and she's like confused because like why would this guy be burning this lift list of safe houses if he was like like pro-slavery like that doesn't make sense and so she burns this she like is like I think I may have effed up I think I may have been tricked and so she burns the list of safe houses all the way so that can be used um against people but she does keep the papers from Donovan and at the same time Sam is in the house trying to like burn the house down for like a distraction and he's successful in burning the house down they meet up on the street and she's like oh my gosh sam i'm so glad you're okay and he's like yeah the craziest thing happened someone shot me with a arrow and it landed right in the heart but it bounced off and selena's like so weird he's like there's spider silk there um and so we find out that that patch of spider silk she had sewn into the breast of one of those uh cat suits was actually she had it sewn into sam's not hers <laughs> how sweet so then selena goes back to arabin and she's like I got you these papers, um, but, like, the other guy, like, burnt his before I could get them. And Arabin's like, that doesn't help us at all. You're not going to get paid for this because, like, you didn't do what we asked. We needed two bodies and all of the papers, and you didn't bring them. Also, he's like, so, so funny. You should mention that. Um, this is... The Queen of Melisande is trying to get this road approved for slave trade purposes. Like, you just participated in making sure a slave trade would happen. And Selena's like, I literally hate you. And Arabin's like, you might be free of me, but you shouldn't forget who I am and who I am ca and what I am capable of. And Selena's like, as long as I live, I will never forget that. Um, and then she does sell her Asterian horse um, to pay for Sam's freedom because she's not going to leave Sam behind. She's not going to leave Sam indebted to Arabin. And so then her and Sam are chilling. She remember how she that fancy, fancy apartment. And they're chilling on the roof of this apartment and it overlooks the river in town. And Sam says, and from this day onward, I never want to be parted from you. Wherever you go, I go. Even if that means going to hell itself. Where, wherever you are, that's where I want to be forever. Um, and wow that's so sweet and actually I think this is where if you would like a happy ending of this book this is where you should stop sometimes I like to pretend that this is where the book stopped her and Sam like decide to flee the country they go to the southern continent um does this world fall like this continent would literally without the rest of the series bad 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 things happen to this continent but it's not their problem it probably would happen in the southern continent too but I think they would have a nice time sometimes I like to pretend that happened that Selena and Sam just got to live happily ever after Unfortunately, there's another story in this, and this story is um, The Assassin and the Empire. So once again, we have a trip to the theater. This time, though, Selena is sitting in the rafters um, watching the theater, watching the orchestra perform, and Arabin and Lysandra are sitting in the, the, the box seats. I don't think I mentioned this last time, but we do come to find out Arabin used all of the money that Selena had given him, all of those chunks of money, to purchase Lysandra for her, like, bidding. So Lysandra had just recently turned 16 or 17. And so a lot of what was happening, I don't think I mentioned it, but a lot of what was happening kind of as an undercurrent in the last book was we were preparing for Lysandra's, like, bidding. And that's where people bid on her virginity because she's, um, like, you know, like a baby prostitute. And this is, like, a fun time. And Arabin did purchase that with Selena's money, which Selena's, like, that's so rude. I hate Lysandra. Um, but, like, 
can we think about Lysander? Let's recall Lysander's like 16, maybe 17 at this point. Arabin is at least in his late 30s. <sighs> anyway, Arabin has like really taken a liking to Lysandra, sort of, probably just using it to manipulate Al Selena because that's what he does. But he, they're sitting in like the box seats. Lysandra's sitting in like Selena's seat. He, Arabin has like a hand on like Lysandra's thigh. Selena's like, ew, I hate them. Um, she feels no pity for Lysandra. <laughs> Anyway, um, then she, like, leaves, and she, like, sneaks home, and she, Sam is not there in her apartment when she gets home, and he's supposed to be, and she knows that he's fighting in the pits, because he keeps going to the pits, which is, like, this mob-owned underground fighting ring, to gain money, because they spent all their money on getting free of Arabin and on the apartment, and so now they have no money left, really, um, and Selena has, like, some nice things. She likes the finer things in life, you know? And so they're really burning through money. And so Sam is trying to gain money, but Selena is like very worried that she's gonna get himself hurt, um, or like killed. Someone could sneak a knife into the ring, or he could get in trouble, self in trouble with like the the mob that runs the underground fighting ring. And so she's like, let's go. Um, and so they go home. And as they're walking home, <laughs> she like leans into him and she realizes that he used her lavender soap as I mentioned Selena likes the finer things in life including this lavender soap it's really expensive though so like he cannot be wasting it and so she's like stop stop <laughs> using my lavender soap um and then Sam tells her we have all the time in the world and maybe he was right and spending all the time in the world with Sam that was a treasure worth paying anything for like they are kind of making plans on like what they should do next they like really are running out of money Sam wants to go to the southern continent and, like, start over and start a new life together. Selena, like, loves Riftgold and is, like, kind of doesn't want to leave. She, like, really enjoys this place <laughs> and she is not excited about leaving it. Um, but she is, like, worth, she's, like, Sam would be worth it. I would, like, leave my life and everything I love behind for Sam. Um, but Sam's, like, we do need more money. Like, if we just take on, like, maybe, like, one more thing, we, we just, like, need a little bit more before we leave, you know? Um, and then they wind up in Arabin's office. I don't remember why they're here. They're chatting with Arabin. And he's like, no matter what I've done, I really do love you, Selena. And Selena's like, F you. She finally is, like, done with him. And he is trying to, like, win her over, and it's, like, not working. And she's like, mm-mm, mm-mm. Oh, I do remember where they're here. They're here to see, like, how much it would be to pick. So they're part of the Assassin's Guild. So Arabin, like, is in charge of all the Assassins. And essentially they pay, like, a month or a yearly due to him to, like, be able to kill people in the city, you know. And Selena and Sam are like, we would like to leave the assassin skilled and so they have to get permission from Arabin in order to leave and Arabin is like it'll cost you so much money to leave and so he tells them it would be like an absurd amount of money to leave and Sam is like annoyed with this Selena's like I'll do it I'll do whatever and he's trying to like win them back over especially Selena he actually doesn't give one single heck about Sam but he's trying to win Selena back over and Selena is not being swayed but he is like really being like I love you Selena I do what I do because I'm afraid and I don't know how to I don't know how to express what I feel and Selena is like um, which is good for her. And Arabin's also like, I know you. I was the one who saved you. I know all your secrets, Selena. And she's a little concerned about that. And so she goes back and she's talking with Sam and she's like, Sam, what is your secret? Do you have any secrets? And Sam is like, the only secret I've borne in my entire life is that I love you. It was the one thing I believed I'd go to the grave without voicing. And she's like, okay, well, I have like real secrets. So it would have been cool if you had some. Like, that's very sweet, but like, it would have been good if you like maybe like killed someone on accident, you know, like give me something to work with here. And he's like, I don't have anything to work with. Then they do get a thing that they can, Sam is like, I have this uh, case that we can get paid for and it's outside of the guild so we don't have to worry about Arabin. And Selena's like, why is it outside the guild? Like the guild provides protections for the assassins that like, you know, they aren't going to get double crossed essentially. And she's like, he's like, oh, it's the like, someone wants the crime boss murdered and she's like I think that's probably a bad idea and he's like no it'll be fine we are so good at this if you recall he's like I can take care of it and then we'll have enough money they're paying us like an absurd amount of money we'll have enough money to leave the guild and enough money to like get started on the southern continent and she's like I don't know but she, he's like I think it'll be a great idea and so they go and they like stay out the house and they're like okay we're gonna do this and then um Selena winds up back at her apartment and when she gets there guess who's there her little buddy Arabin. Arabin is like, hey, girly girl. And she's like, get out of my fucking apartment. How did you even get here? And he's like, mm, I know everything. Obviously. And um, she's like, okay, why are you here? And he's like, you cannot murder that mob boss. This, this is like such a, such a bad idea. He will kill you. Like, it's not going to work. There's a reason that it's like outside the guild. Like, you need to do it. And she's like, no. And he's like, also like, have you talked to Sam about like everything from your past? 
because there's like some stuff that I don't think you brought up with him. And she's like, goodbye, Airman. But she's also like, yeah, there is some stuff. And so then when Sam comes home, she is like chatting with him. They're talking more about secrets. And he's like, what is your secret? And she's like, I'm a coward. That's my biggest secret. And he's like, sometimes I get scared too. And he's like, what I do is I say, my name is Sam Cortland and I will not be afraid. And she's like, does that work? And he's like, you know, like sometimes it works and sometimes it just feels silly. And then like the silliness like makes the fear go away. And she's like, I wish I was talking about being that kind of coward. She would like very unclear what she's mentioning here, but she like, there's a cowardice that is, like, very, like, bone deep. That's not, like, scared of a situation that's just, like, scared, you know? But anyway, this phrase, my name is Sam Cortland and I will not be afraid, will haunt me for the rest of my days. Anyway, um, they go and they're, like, staking out this place. Selena's still feeling really nervous. Um, Arabin, I guess, at some point had, like, talked to Sam and Sam was like, Sam, did Selena tell you all of her secrets? And he is like don't worry about it. And he's like, Selena, when you are good and ready to tell me the truth, you'll do it. And no matter what it is, when that day comes, I'll be honored that you trust me enough to do so. But until then, it's not my business. And it's not Arabin's business. And it's not any business but your own. Because Sam is a 10 out of 10 gem of a man. And Selena feels like very comforted by this. She like knows that someday she will be able to trust Sam. And she's like so, ex she's like glad for that day. She's like happy moving forward. They follow this guy around, this mob boss guy around. She like goes and buys books. And Selena's like, I like those books too. This is kind of weird. Um, and Sam is like, I'm going to take care of this by myself. So he's going to take care of one of the guys and Selena's going to take care of the other, but he needs to take care of his guy first. And so he's doing that while Selena is supposed to be packing up the apartment. And she's like, I hate packing. Um, but she's doing it. She's like chilling in the apartment. She's packing. She's trying to pass the time. She's mostly just like lounging on the couch, but then like it's later than it should be. And it's later than it should be. And so she leaves the apartment and goes and looks for him. She can't find him. So she comes back, she falls asleep for a little bit, dawn breaks, he's still not home, and she's, like, out searching the city, looking everywhere, trying to find him, she cannot find him, she's, like, looking all around, there's, like, no sense that something has gone awry in the house, like, everyone in the, like, the mob boss's house is, like, functioning normally, she doesn't know what's going on, when she gets back to her apartment, Arabin is on her couch, and Arabin is, like, um, they brought his body back to the keep because they thought he was, he, that's where he was living, they didn't know he was living here. <laughs> I told you I would cry. <laughs> oh, they didn't know he was living here. And Selena's like, take me to see his body. Like, I need to see his body. And Arabin's like, you don't want to see his body. Like, it's bad, Selena. And she runs all the way to the keep um, to find him. We just have a blank slide here because um, <laughs> I could not handle it. I could not handle the thought of having a picture slide. There's a gorgeous piece of fan art that shows um, the scene where Selena goes and sees Sam's body. And Sam has been, like, brutally tortured. Um, like, all of his fingers have been broken. His face and body is, like, cut up. And he's, like, disfigured. Like, he's been brutally tortured. Um, and she just, like, lays with him for a while. And um, she makes a comment that she he smells kind of strange. And under... And he smells like the cheap soap that she made him use. Because he she was too greedy to share her lavender soap with him. And, she's, and she, like, falls asleep next to him. And then they carry her up to her, like, her old room in the keep to sleep in Arabin. <laughs> anyway, so Sam is gone. And it is a uh, heartbreak. It will rip your heart out of your butthole. <laughs> anyway, we'll try to gather ourselves. So, um, Selena wakes up in her room, and she hears these men talking outside of her door. It's Arabin and another guy. And they're talking about how they're going to, like, go get revenge, um, on Sam's death at the my boss's house and Selena's like obviously I went in on this and they're like make sure Selena doesn't leave but they're talking right outside of her door so like she's like and they like they're like we're going to lock her door and lock her in and she's like whatever and she jumps out the window and like runs away and this man named Wesley who we've like never really liked he's like kind of been annoying this whole time uh is like don't go there it's up and he, she knocks it out before she he can hear the rest so anyway, she's waiting on the roofs um, across from the mob boss's house. She is like feral at this point. Like she is a feral. And so she like runs in. She jumps in through a window and the curtains were blocked. So she didn't realize this window was, it was, they were having a full meeting. They were in a full meeting inside this room. She thought the room was going to be empty. But she jumps in and she starts just like literally just killing people. Like slicing people down left and right. She kills 
the guy one of the mob boss guys um and then the room starts to fill up with smoke and then the other mob boss guy has like a mask on that prevents him from getting smoked out and essentially what happens is she passes out and he's like really creepy with her and he's like i wish i could keep you but i promised arabin that i would send you to the king and um so she gets sent to the dungeon she like hangs out in the dungeons for a while and then the king of Ardalane shows up and is like sentencing her and she thinks she's gonna be sentenced to death which would make sense they like read out a list of all the people she's murdered and um it's a lot <laughs> and he she thinks she's gonna be he's he's sen sentencing her to death but instead he sentences her to nine lives in the uh salt mines so the slave mines in endover and like um they like pack her up in a wagon and they ship her off to endover and we get a little cut to Arabin. Arabin's on the roof and he's chatting with someone and they're like, why didn't you rescue her? It would like be so easy to rescue her from a prison wagon. Like that's not even hard. And Arabin's like, he's like, since I was the one who put her there, it seems silly for me to take her out. And they were like, why did you put her there? She's like the best assassin you have. And he's like, I don't like to share my belongings. And this is when Arabin like truly becomes like, I mean like Arabin's always been vile. But this man is now truly just like, Ugh. Like, a, like, Sarah J. Mast did a beautiful job writing him as a character. But, like, as an individual? Ugh. Anyway, so she goes to Endover. And um, Endover's a bad time. And she, on her way, she sees the stag in the north. She sees this beautiful white stag um, on her way, like, right into Endover. And it's this symbol for her to, like, persevere. And so, one of the last things she says is... My name is Selena Sarthdothian, and I will not be afraid. And she would not break. Ugh. And that's where we end with uh, Assassin's Blade. Is Selena is in a prison. She now is like... We've like learned her character, but also now she like is out to get revenge, obviously. And so when we pick up in Throne of Glass, we will see a Selena that has gone through all of this and is just like ready to like cut some bitches. Is ready to cut some bitches. Um, anyway, <laughs> that was Assassin's Blade. Um, I hope you enjoyed my little, little recap. I, like, really enjoy doing these. They take a lot of work, but, um, I think they're fun. And I like her watching them. And, really, that's what we're here for, right? <laughs> that's what I'm here for. Um, I will hopefully be doing a Throne of Glass one. I, like, hope. The plans, currently. But we'll see how it, uh, fares out, especially with, um, my writing schedule for this year is to do like a bookish a month with these like i want to go through all throne of glass maybe quarter throne and roses too and maybe the second crescent city book because they do already have a recap of the first crescent city book <clears throat> so that's kind of the game plan for these but we'll see we'll see how it goes anyway i will talk to you later have a great day bye mm -hmm.